Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is the Detroit Tigers versus the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. Pitching today for Detroit is going to be Jack Morris, who is 8-4 with a 3.97 ERA. And he's going to be facing off against Mike Torres, who is 4-6 with a 5.17 ERA. Yesterday's game, we were demolished pretty early, and it was often. And uh, we did have one bright spot in the 9-2 loss. Tom Brookins hit a home run, and he might be our hottest Tiger right now. Um, he finally got his batting average over 200. He's up to uh, 217. So that's one of the, uh, the bright highlights of a otherwise uh, fairly dim game. Um, and I also just wanted to point out before we get started that we are now in a three-way tie for first place at 41 and 28 with New York and Baltimore. And uh, everyone else, for the most part, is out of it in the uh, American League East. So I guess this is going to be one of those uh, seasons where you know every game matters from here on out. So let's go ahead and get started with today's game. Um, as always, I appreciate everyone who follows along. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Also, with my uh, Brainiac Baseball card breaks um, yesterday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday for Time Travel Tuesday, uh, we opened up a box of 1991 football, upper deck football. And in that video, I announced another contest that we'll be having where we're going to be giving away a 1985 Topps Baseball Rack Pack that could have Roger Clemens rookie card, Kirby Puckett's rookie card, and of course uh, the iconic Mark McGuire rookie card. So all you need to do is watch that video and it'll t give you the instructions and uh, you can be entered. So anyway, back to uh, the matchup here. Jack Morris, again, 8-4. and four. We're going to pull up his stats. You can take a look at where he's at. He's actually won six games in a row so he is on quite a roll right now um our bullpen is going to be down two left-handers which is not going to be great with uh, all the lefties in the red sox lineup but with morris on the mound maybe we can uh, get through seven innings and then uh, just take it from there and uh, here's today's lineup we'll go over the uh, lineup momentarily so let's set up today's stats, and uh, as I've done in the, in the recent past, um, we're going to go over the lineup, and then I'll show you their statistics. And over here, you'll see their 1980 uh, baseball card. So betting leadoff for Detroit is Sweet Lou Whitaker, and here's his betting information. You can feel free to pause it if you want to take an extended look. Batting second is Richie Hebner. Batting third and playing right field is going to be Gary Hancock. Batting cleanup and catching is going to be Lance Parrish. Batting fifth and playing left field is Steve Kemp. Batting sixth and playing center field is Barry Bunnell. Batting seventh and playing first base is Jason Thompson. Batting 8th and DHing is Carlton Fisk. And batting ninth and playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. And pitching for the Red Sox is Mike Therese. Here's his stats. 33-year-old, started when he was 20. And looks like he's bounced around quite a bit. All right, let's get this game going. Play ball! Lou Whitaker leading off against Mike Therese. Whitaker's going to hit it into center field, and that'll be the first out. So one down for Richie Hebner, who's two for five with a walk against Mike Therese. And he pops it up on the infield just over the pitcher's mound. And Rick Burleson's got it at short. So with two down, here's Gary Hancock, our best hitter, betting 333 versus righties. 
He's going to hit a deep fly ball to the deepest part of the park, 400 feet, but it's going to be caught by Freddie Lynn in center field. So let's go over the Red Sox lineup today. Betting first is Mike Kingery playing right field, 19-year-old rookie getting uh, every day playing time. Betting second is Wade Boggs, also a rookie in this game. Of course, in real life, he didn't. He wasn't a rookie until 1982. Batting third, bet playing center field, is Fred Lynn. Batting cleanup is Jim Rice, playing left field. Batting fifth and DHing is going to be 40-year-old Carlton Fisk. Batting sixth and playing first base is Jim Dwyer. Batting 7th and catching is Dave Rader. Batting 364. Batting 8th and playing 2nd base is Larry Wolf. And batting ninth and playing shortstop is Rick Burleson. So that's the lineup for the home team, Boston Red Sox. And here's Mike Kingery facing Jack Morris. Oh, and he greets him with a base hit to right field and an error by Gary Hancock. I just hate to show this, but take a moment here to show defensively. That is Hancock's fifth error in 41 games. And the whole reason I got him was for his defensive prowess. And uh, although he's been paying off as a solid hitter, uh, he definitely has been a disappointment defensively. So batting uh, second is Wade Boggs with Mike Kingery on second base. And Boggs hits it to center and it's gonna drop in for a base hit and the first run is on the board. So it's one nothing early on. Nobody out for Freddie Lynn. And a wild pitch is gonna send Boggs to second base. So we're off to a pretty horrendous start, especially for Jack Morris. I'm going to bring the outfield in against Freddie Lynn, try to prevent Boggs from scoring on a base hit. Lynn's going to ground it to first. Boggs advances to third, and we're going to pull the infield in now with one out to prevent another run from scoring. Oh, that's going to be a hit off the wall, a double for Rice, and that's the second run scored. So this seems to be a problem for us. We... Um, we seem to get hits in bunches, and we seem to pitch well in bunches, but we can't do either at the same time. As Yastrzemski pops out to second base. And that brings up Jim Dwyer, who had his first home run of the year in yesterday's game. And Dwyer strikes out looking. So Detroit gives up two runs, uh, an error on Hancock, and the score is 2 to nothing as we head to the top of the second base. Top of the second inning, and uh, that brings up Parrish, uh, who's going to get a double. So I guess I called that. Uh, a double for Parrish. Runner on second. Nobody out for Steve Kemp. And Kemp's going to walk. The one thing I did do differently in this game, lineup-wise, is I switched Hancock and Kemp. I got the better average hitter um, and switched him with the better power uh, RBI hitter. So here's Barry, uh, Barry Bunnell, who's got one home run against uh, Mike Torres. And he's going to pop it up to second base. That's going to be the first out. So one down for Jason Thompson. And Thompson's going to take a third strike looking. So it's going to be up to Fisk, who's in a terrible slump. I mean, really, the, first, the last uh, month and a half, he's been in bad shape. And he's going to ground it to third, and that'll be the final out. So we head to the bottom of the second. And uh, it's going to bring up um, good hitting Dave Rader. I don't know what's gotten into this guy, but yeah, he crushes us. There's going to be a double against the wall. Oh, it's going to be held to a single, actually. So just a base hit. And uh, we cannot get that guy out, and it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, it's going to bring up Larry Wolf. And Wolf's going to ground it to Trammell. That should be two. And it is. 
So double play. And that'll bring up the number nine hitter with two outs, Rick Burleson. Burleson grounds it to short. And we're out of the second inning, heading to the top of the third with the number nine hitter, Alan Trammell. Trammell's going to walk, second walk of the game for Mike Therese. And we're going to let Whitaker swing away. And he's going to ground it to third, and that should be a double play as well. Yep. Well, I was thinking about hitting and running, but um, I thought it maybe if we give uh, Whitaker a chance to just uh, maybe get an extra base hit, but it didn't happen. And after Hepner flies out to right, we're headed to the bottom of the third. So Tigers have nothing going offensively. As Kingery grounds it to short, that's going to be one down. Morris already at 42 pitches. Boggs hits it to right, and that's going to be the second out. So that brings up Freddie Lynn with two down, and he's going to hit it to straightaway center. It's going to go off the back wall for a double, and another runner in scoring position for Boston. So Jim Rice is up. He's only one for eight against Morris, and he's going to ground it to uh, JT, and that'll get us out of the inning. So we head to the top of the fourth, looking to get something going here. Gary Hancock leads off. He's going to pop it up over the pitcher's mound to shallow center field. And the shortstop, Burleson's got it for the first out. Parrish is going to walk. So that's a third walk for Therese. Kemp is going to hit a fly ball to center. And that'll be two down. Bring it up Barry Bunnell. And he's going to fly out to center as well. So, once again, not much going on with the Tigers' offense. I really don't know what else to do for them to get them going. I've switched up the lineups. I've given people the days off resting. As Yaz lines out to Trammell. So... I don't really know what else to, to do to get him uh, motivated and as uh, Morris walks Dwyer. And now that we're in a three-way tie for first, every game is important, like I mentioned, as Raider grounds the short, and that'll be a double play. So we head to the top of the fifth. Here's uh, Thompson. He's two for six against Torres. And he's going to get... Oh, I thought that was going to be a base hit. But it was taken away by Burleson. And that'll be the first out of the inning. And Fisk repeats Thompson's play by grounding to short. And our own shortstop, Alan Trammell, comes to plate with two outs. He's going to get an infield hit. And uh, we may as well try to steal second and get somebody in the scoring position. We've got nothing to lose. Trammell does get a stolen base. So runner at second chance for Whitaker to drive in a run and he's just going to ground it to third so nothing doing for Detroit as we head to the bottom of the fifth Morris at 69 pitches nice Larry Wolf is going to get a double though to the wall up oh, and be held to a single and uh, nobody out Rick Burles the number nine hitters up and he's going to get a hit down the right field line. And that's going to advance Wolf to third base. So first and third, we got to pull the infield in. Can't really give up another run the way we're hitting right now. Oh, and it goes right through Trammell's uh, legs as uh, there's an error by Kemp in left field. Burleson advances to third. And this is definitely not going to be our game. This is um, when we get two errors and no runs being scored. Um, there's really nothing you can do about it. So I guess we're just going to try to get a double play with Boggs. Nope, Boggs walks. So Morris was, was due for a, um, a bad game. And I guess this is going to be it. So we're going to pull the infield in. And Lynn 
grounds to Whitaker. We do get a double play out of it as we go catcher to first base. So two down. Jimmy Rice is up. And he's going to ground it to Thompson. So only one run is scored. And we head to the top of the sixth. And Mike Therese is totally in control as he strikes out Hebner looking. One down. And here's Gary Hancock. He's going to hit a high fly ball to right. And that'll be the second out. So two down. Lance Parrish is up. He's got one of the two hits this game. And he's going to hit a long fly ball to left field. And it's going to be caught right at the green monster. So a 1-2-3 inning. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Morris is at 85 pitches. And Yaz leads off with a line drive to first base. That's the first out. So one down for Jim Dwyer. And Dwyer's going to walk. That's three walks for Morris, along with eight hits. So, um, yeah, this is not much like his normal uh, recent pitching performances as uh, Dave Rader grounds into the fourth double play. So I guess it's more of an indictment in how Morris is pitching than it is on our great defense. Because we do have two errors this game. And Kemp strikes out to lead off the top of the seventh. So, I mean, we just cannot get anything going. Benell's going to pop it up to second. And that'll be the second out. So two down. Here's Jason Thompson. And Thompson gets a base hit up the middle. He was robbed in the previous at-bat by Burleson, and he makes up for it by getting a base hit. So, one swing of the bat by Fisk can get us back into this. But he's going to have a lazy fly ball to center field. And another inning where we put a big goose egg up on the board. So Morris has gotten us to the seventh inning, and that's what I was hoping for, but with the lead, of course, as he strikes out Larry Wolf for the second out. I'm sorry, his second strikeout, but the first out of the inning. And then he turns around and walks the number nine hitter. So normally this is where I would bring in a lefty to face um, the top of the lineup, but um, since he's getting a lot of ground balls, maybe we can turn a double play. Nope. He walks the leadoff hitter, Kingry, 19 years old, all Morris has got to do is throw it over the plate. So we're going to guard the lines for Wade Boggs. With one down, Boggs is going to hit it deep to center field, but I think Bunnell's got it. Yep, so that'll be two down. So two outs, and Fred Lynn, who's four for nine against Morris, batting 306. But we're going to trust Morris. There we go, strikes him out. So we get out of that inning. That's going to be the last inning for Morris. Um, pitched fairly solidly. His bolt, uh, his defense let him down. And we do start off the top of the eighth with a base hit by Trammell. So runner at first. Sweet Lou's up. And we need something here from Lou. Ooh, a walk. We'll take a walk. Walk's as good as a hit. And that really does bring the tying run up to the plate in Richie Hebner, who does lead the team with 10 home runs. And he's going to pop it up just weakly to the second baseman. So not at all what we're looking for. Um, man, I would have been better off just sacrifice bunting. And the same thing for Hancock, just a weak pop fly to second. So... Two down for Parrish, and yep, all three just popped up to the second baseman. So, this game is definitely not meant to be. We're going to bring in uh, Tom Hume to get Rice, and then we'll bring in the lefty, probably to finish the game. Rice is going to have a fly ball to right field, that'll be the first out, and we're going to replace Hume with uh, Capizello and we'll use him to finish off the game. He strikes out Yaz, so good job by Capizello getting the second out. 
and Jim Dwyer is going to slice it to left field and it's going to be caught by Kemp. So we're down to our final three outs and uh, Kemp leads off the ninth against Torres only at 103 pitches and Kemp is going to ground it to Jim Dwyer at first base for the first out of the ninth. So one down and Bunnell grounds it to second. So down to our final out. This has been a pathetic performance. And Thompson's going to fly out to right. So we're going to be shut out for the first time all year when we needed it, needed it most. So that's probably the most disappointing game of the season for us. We've lost some, some late games and we've definitely given up some uh, high scoring games. But we haven't been shut out. And I guess our time was due. Here's a big trade offer from the Giants. Um, they're offering us Larry Herndon, who we did get from the Giants in, in a couple more years, in 83. And also Milt May, who did come to the Tigers from the Giants as well. Uh, and then uh, second baseman Joe Strain for Barry Bunnell. Um, and of course, we're going to say no to that because we traded for Bunnell uh, to be our center fielder. So... Let's take a look and see if there's any transactions today. There is nothing new of note. Let's pull up the box score and we'll get out of here. Thanks again, everyone, to, to following along. I'm going to put a link in the comments to uh, go to the uh, Upper Deck Football card break. So you can enter the contest if you want to. Um, otherwise, just like and subscribe. Morris takes a loss, breaking his six-game winning streak. Um, geez, who's our player of the game? I guess we're going to have to give it to uh, Trammell, who went two for two with a walk and a stolen base. So Trammell will be the player of the game. And that's it for this uh, evening. Have yourself a good one, and we'll see you tomorrow.